Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to learn how to do tapestry crochet. I know I've been putting up some tapestry, actually I don't know if I've put them up yet or not by the time you watch this video. Um, we're just going to start with a simple heart. And I've already jotted some things down. So each of these squares you need to count to see how much you need across. So I have 29 squares across. So I'm going to need to chain 30 in order to have 29 working squares or stitches. Then I counted the squares I have going up and I have 29 rows. So I know what I'm working with as far as how many rows I'm going to. So when you do tapestry crochet, this ruler will be your chain 30. Then you're going to start when you start your single crochets back you're going to start on the graph. So you're going to chain 30, which is the ruler. Then you're going to do 29 single crochets just in this color. You need uh, two rows of this color. So when you do your crochets, this is the side where I put this dot. Your next row is going to start over here and you're going to crochet this way. And then you're going to get here and you're going to crochet this way. So you don't have to crochet backwards, you just have to read the chart this way. So I put little dots on the side so I know where I'm at. Now if you want to go a step further you can put round one, round three, round five, round seven, round, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to do that. So each of the yarns that I am using for this project is a four weight. I'm going to use white and red and each of them is a four weight. But because we are going to be building this so that you can use both sides, we're not going to have floaters. So we're going to carry our yarn throughout the entire project. So I'm going to use a six millimeter. I hope it's big enough. I'm not sure if it will be or not. Um, but that's a decision that you need to make. I'm just suggesting that if your yarn calls for a five millimeter, go up, go up by a hook or a hook and a half or two hooks because you're going to be carrying both pieces of yarn throughout your project and I don't want it to be really tight and get out of shape and everything else. So we're going to start this and I'm going to go through it with you. So you just need to start by making a slip knot and chaining 30. So that's my 30. You're going to single crochet 29 because your first row here, your first two rows are blank. There's no, there's no red heart. So just take your time because you need to be exact in what you're doing as far as your numbers go because then your heart's not going to work out if you're not exact. So I thought with Valentine's coming up that we could do a heart tapestry. And I will put the link below where you can print out free tapestry graphs. Once you learn how to do it, you will love it. So that's my first row done. So now my second row, so this is the first row done. I'm going to move up my ruler. Your second round has to be red. Now I know we're not reading anything because it's still white. But your second round has to be red from left to right which is just plain white or whatever color you're using. 
color A. So I'm at the end, and don't forget this turny over stitch. This this likes to curl up and turn over, but there is a V there, so that means there is a stitch. So don't forget that guy. Because if you're not getting 29, you might just be missing that last weird stitch. So that's 29 for me. So I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to turn. So this is where we start incorporating our colors. So I've got my dot on this side. I know I'm working right to left in this row. So now you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's 14. And I like to just put a small number. So if I wanted to use this chart over and over again, that's 14 color A, 1 color B, and 14 color A. So let's begin. 14 color A. This gets easier as it gets taller. So that's 14, but I'm not going to finish the stitch. I want to finish the stitch with my new color. So I need to finish it with red because I'm going to red. So pull down on your white. Try to keep this as loose as possible. So now I've done my 14 and now I do my one red, but I'm not going to finish the stitch because I need to go back to the white. So I need to finish the stitch with the white. And that's how you do a color change that's seamless. And now with the white, I do 14. Now I'm weaving. I gotta weave everything in in the back. And now I gotta do 14 color A, which is the white. Try to keep your tension loose. So, that's your first round with your first color. You can snip that piece of tail off later. So you can see some red through it, obviously. I mean, you can't you can't get away from that. So that's going to be throughout your project, which is perfectly fine. You cannot get away from it. So let's move our ruler up. So now we're moving. We're going to read our chart left to right. So that's 13, color A. We've got 3, color B, and then probably 13. 13, color A. And it's going to be the same for two rows. So if you, you want to do charts like I do, I sit and I do all my numbers for the chart before I start crocheting. But for the video, I'm showing you this way so that you understand how we do it. So when we come back around, this is going to be 13 because it's exactly the same as the row before. So you, you 
have an easy spot here. Actually, this whole chart's pretty easy because you know you got two rows, you can do the same. As far as this twisting, you just need to take your hook out, grab one of your colors and just give it a couple of twists. It's, it'll be fine, it takes two seconds. Um, or you can use bobbins, which I don't have down here right now to show you. So I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn and I'm going to use turn with my red. Now my red is going to be in the front so I can weave it in. And I'm going to do my 13 color A. So I'm at 10. I just want to pull on my red a bit because I'm trying to hide it on this side, which it's not going to work out so well because it never does. So I got three more to go. If I don't have two left hands all of a sudden, oops, I'm using the wrong color. Wow, I can't seem to so walk ruin your first start. 11, 12, and that's my 13th. So my 13th stitch, I'm not going to finish. With the white, I'm going to finish with the red. And now I have to do three red. So there's one, two, and three. But I'm not going to finish the third one with the... Oh, I just dropped my red roll. I'm not going to finish the third one with the red. I'm going to finish it with the white because I'm going to white. And now I do 13 white. You're going to have to count every single row and make sure you're... So it's just starting to roll because I'm carrying two pieces of yarn. And quite frankly, the red shining through, showing through, is actually quite nice. I like it. So it looks weird right now. So chain one, turn your work, and then you have to repeat the same thing that we just did. So, 13 white. So that's my 13 white, but I'm not going to finish it with the white. I'm going to finish it with the red because my next three stitches are red. Now my third red, I'm going to finish with the white. chain one and turn so well that's what we have so far I know it doesn't look right right now <laughs> but it will it'll all look fine so we've done that row and we've done that row so because of my dot over here I know that this next row is where I'm gonna start so on this side you can do every other square so that you know which side you're starting on if you lose your spot. It's all fine and dandy to have a ruler 
But if you don't know which side you're starting on, you don't know which way to read. So this way, we're going to read left to right. So that's 12 white. That's 5 red. And 12 white. So the next row is different, so we don't do the same. I needed something to drink, sorry. I have a very sore throat. I've had this cold for a couple of weeks. And I'm going to lose my voice. So we need to do 12 red, or white, sorry, excuse me. 12 white. So make sure you're starting in the very first stitch and you're getting into the very last stitch. Or else your numbers are going to be all wonky. So this is my 12th stitch and I'm going to red so I need to finish the stitch with the red and pull down on my white and now I'm doing 5 red. So on my 5th stitch of red I'm going to finish it with the white. I almost screwed up. Pull down on your red, tighten everything right up, and now you're going to do 12 color A. So tapestry crochet is pretty easy. It's a little awkward with getting, you know, your hook size right, or your tension right, or even holding it once you first start, you know, with the two colors but once you get on to it I made my grandkids a bunch of purses for Christmas that had unicorns on them and butterflies on them and and that was all done with tapestry crochet and they absolutely freaked out so just stretch your work out make sure you're pulling your red kind of tightish just so it's not completely glaring through the whole project but I think it's pretty the way it does and you can use both sides of the work and that's what I like about it so let's keep going let's stop blathering so now that we've read left to right there's my dot I have to read right to left so that's 11 white 7 red and probably 11 white. I mean, it all seems to be even, so. So again, we chain one and we turn, and we do 11 white. That's my 11. I almost screwed up again. But I'm going to finish the 11th stitch with the red because I have to do 7 red. So this color change can be applied to all your crochet work. So that's my 7th stitch. I'm going to finish it with the white because I know my next stitch is white. And I'm keeping my tension really loose because I am only using a six millimeter. one. I'm going to spin a couple of times to unravel this. There we go. Like I said, takes two seconds. 
I just find with bobbins that if you're doing something that's a significant amount of work that the bobbins run out and then you've got to, you know, make a knot. I don't like knots. So that row is done. We scooch our ruler up and we go to the next row. So like I said, all this would be marked off if I was doing this without without the tutorial. I would have this all marked off with numbers. So I would just slide my ruler crochet, slide my ruler crochet. So it would all, so just pre-number your charts. So now my dot's here, so I know I'm reading left to right. So that's 10. This is 9, and this will be 10. So each row has to add up to 29, because we started with 29 working chains. So each row has to add up to 29. So if that's an easier way to count, you only have to count part of it and then the rest of it as long as it adds up to 29 you already know what the number is going to be on this side so now this row is going to be exactly the same it's going to be 10 9 and 10 because it's stacked so even though I'm reading left to right and then I've got to go right to left it's still going to turn out to be the same numbers so those will be our next two rows So chain one and turn and do 10 single crochets with your color A. So that's 10, but I'm going to finish it with my red and I'm going to pull down on my white and I'm going to do nine single crochets with the red. So this is my number nine and I'm going to finish it with my white. Pull down on my red and do my 10 single crochets back up. Chain one and turn. So I know my next round is going to be the same. So I'm going to scooch my ruler up and I'm going to do the same. So that's number 10. I'm going to finish it with my red. So that's my ninth red. I'm going to finish it with my white. I'm going to pull down on my red and then I'm going to do 10 single crochets. Chain one, turn my work. And I'm going to move that up. So now I know I start on this side because I put my little dot there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine. And that looks like that's going to be nine. So I'm just going to double write it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And again, the top row matches. So it's always good to watch what you're doing as far as your rows ahead. And because I know this ad has to add up to 29. Then I already know what's on this side is 9. 18 and 11 is 29. So I know my next two rows 
is going to be the same again, which like I said is such an easy pattern because you can do two rows at the same time. So, nine white. And that's nine, so I'm going to finish my ninth stitch with my red. So, pull down on everything because I just made everything loosey goosey. I'll pull down on everything, make sure everything's kind of tightish but not tight. Do you know what I mean? So, now I know I have to do 11 red. This is my 11th stitch, so I'm going to switch to the white, pull down on everything, and I'm going to do my 9 single crochets in white. So I'm going to pull on my red because I forgot to pull on my red here and I got a bit of a bump right there and I don't really much like it but I'm going to stretch my work out and that just kind of pulls that down so afterwards we're going to do a lot of stretching but this is what we have so far. So your next row is exactly the same so I'm just going to push up my ruler so I know that I'm starting over here as far as how I'm reading it. I'm just going to give these a couple of turns unturn un untwist myself I'm in chain one and turn so we're going to repeat the same thing so do nine white And nine, I'm going to finish with the red. Pull down on everything. And then do your 11 red. So that's my 11 red. I'm going to finish it with the white. Pull down on my red and do my 9 white. Chain 1. Next row, but I gotta go pick up my red yarn. It's driving me nuts. There we go. It hangs off the table and then it just pulls so you feel like you're constantly playing with it. So I just finished that row so now I'm going to scooch my ruler up. Next row I'm reading left to right. So that's eight. So I'm guessing this is going to be eight. So that's 13. So 8 and 8 is 16 plus 13 is 29. So just make sure that when you're doing your numbers they add up to 29 which is what you figured out in the first place. So eight in the white. That's my eight. I'm going to pull on my red a bit before I, because I think I had a, a big gap. 
I'm going to finish my eighth stitch with the red. I'm going to pull down on my white. And then I'm going to do, what did I say, 13 red. So this is my 13th stitch. I'm going to finish with my white, pull down on my red, and do my eight single crochets in white. And my turning over stitch. Chain one and turn. I'm just gonna spin this because somehow when I picked it up, I got it all ejected. So I have the dot here, so I know I just read this way. So when I push this up, I know I have to read from right to left. So that's seven. So I'm guessing this is gonna be seven. And this is 15. So you can see it all nicely coming together. If I look awkward, it's because I have to do this on camera and I'm used to holding this closer to my body. So that's the only reason I look awkward, that and this new hook, but I'm, I'm starting to figure out what, how to hold it properly. I hate, I hate new things. So make sure you're getting into this first stitch. So what am I doing? I just said it, seven, seven white. So that's number seven that I finish with the red. Oh, I just pulled up on everything. I finish with the red. Pull down on your white and do 15 red. I just said it and I couldn't remember. So that's 15. If I do go off camera at any point, I apologize. Like I said, I'm used to holding this close to my body. So I'm going to finish my 15th stitch with my white, and I'm going to do my 7 white. Chain 1, because we're going to turn. So I'm going to push this up. Now it looks like the next two rows are the same. So I'm going to read left to right. So that's six. This is 17. And this is going to be six. The next row is going to be the same, except for I'm reading right to left. And it's going to be 6, 17, and 6. So, 6 white. That's my six. Now before I finish the stitch, I want to just pull on my red because I don't think I was holding it quite tight enough. So I'm going to finish my sixth stitch with my red. I'm going to pull down on my white 
And now I'm going to do 17 red. That's my 17 red that I'm going to finish with white. And I'm going to do my 6 white. And a stupid turning over stitch. Chain 1. Turn your work because you know that you're doing it all over again. Move up my ruler. Moving on, I've got my dot over here, so I know I have to read this way. So that's five. This is 19. And this is five. So that's my fifth stitch. I'm going to pull it down on my red before I finish my stitch. I finish my stitch and pull down on my white. Once you get onto this, it's not as awkward as I'm making it seem like. So now we're going to do 19 red. That's my 19 red. I'm going to finish with my white and pull down on my red. So throughout this video I've been writing this down as color A, color B. And I've been trying to say that throughout the video but I keep saying white and red. <laughs> Chain one, turn your work. So as you can see from your own work you're able to use both sides of this. So now I've got my dot here so I know I have to read right to left. This is four. This is 21 and this is four. So again 21 plus 8 is 29. So still making sure that everything adds up to 29. So I'm going to do my four white. On my fourth stitch, I'm going to finish it with the red, pull down on my white, and now I'm going to do 21 red. This is my 21th stitch. 
So I'm going to finish it with my white. I'm going to pull down on my red. And then I'm going to do my four single crochet. So your sides are going to get this kind of an artifact from just bringing your yarn along. And I actually think it's pretty cool. So I'm just going to give myself an untwist. Here we go. So our next round, I might as well do the whole heart with you while I'm at it. So my next round is going to be left to right. And I'm going to do three and three. And this is 23, which again adds up to 29. And both rows are exactly the same. So again, you have two rows. That are the same. I moved my ruler. So one, two, and the third stitch you change to red. So finish the third stitch with your red. Pull down on your white. And now you're going to do 23 red. So now that I've shown you um, these next two rows, um, I'm going to put on my screen what you can do, and I'll meet you back here after both your rows are done, because they're exactly the same, so I shouldn't have to do them with you. So, that was my two rows. So when I scooch up, I see that my dot's over here, so I need to read this way. And this one's going to be in the next two rows as well. So you've got two white. That's 25. And then two white. chain one and turn. Once you get onto this, it doesn't take very long at all to do something that could be the size of a pillow. So you can do, I, I've done a small pillow actually, I've got in this pile here, I've got a heart that I did, made a pillow. Um, so I'm going to finish my second stitch with the red, and now I'm going to do 25 red. So my 25th stitch needs to end with the white and then my two white. Chain one and repeat what we just did. Uh oh. I have a knot somehow. this was my last row I'm just gonna pop up here and I have to read left to right so this is two in the white that's 12 in the red one in the white and then 12 in the red 
So now we're changing it up a little bit. So with your white, do your one and a half stitch because you're going to finish it with the red. Pull down on your white. See all this that I got going on? That's just because I'm not pulling hard enough on my colors. That's all it is. So I'm going to do 12 red. So this is my 12th. I need to finish the 12th stitch with my white. I'm going to do one white. So I'm going to do half a stitch of white because my next stitch is red so I have to finish it with the red. But the white will still show. And then do 12 red. So I need to finish this stitch with the white and I need to do my two white at the end. So now you can see where the split in the heart is going to start. Move it up. Now I've got to read right to left. So that's two. That's 11. This is three. This will be 11 and this will be 2. Now, this graph is right in the middle so everything's working out. But not every graph is like that. So just don't take the easy way out like I am. Actually count your spaces. But I am doing a video. I'm just trying to be quick about doing this video so people don't have to wait forever. <laughs> So, I wasn't even going to do the whole video, I was just going to teach you how to read a chart, but turns out, turns out I'm figure for Valentine's Day I might as well. Stitch number two needs to end with your red, it needs to be finished with your red. Pull down on your white, and now you're going to do 11 red. So that's my 11th stitch. It needs to finish with the white. Pull down on your red and you're going to do three white. You're going to finish the third one with the red and you're going to do 11 of those. So my 11th stitch needs to finish with white, hold down on your red, and do your two whites. Chain one. I'm going to run out of red color here soon. So my next round, there's my dot, so I know i got to read from left to right. That's two. This is 10, this is 5, this is 10, and this is 2. Alright, turn your work. 
So we're reading left to right. So two single crochets. And on the second stitch, switch to red. Pull down on your white. And we're going to do ten red. That's my 10, but since everything is so awkward right now, I didn't really have my white very tight, so I'm just going to pull on my white before I finish the stitch, because I just didn't feel like everything was tight. I'm going to pull down on my red, so my white is 5 white. And on the fifth one, I'm going to finish it with red, pull down on my white, and do my 10 red. That's my 10. I'm going to finish with my white, and I'm going to do my two single crochets. Make sure you're getting under both those pieces of the turning chain. Chain one, turn your work. So next round, right to left, that's three. This is eight. This is seven. So this will be eight and this is three. But not all the time. Just make sure you're counting and make sure it's adding up 29. I can't can't stress that enough. So we need three whites. That's my third. I'm going to switch to the red. Hold down on my white. I'm going to do eight red. That's eight. I'm going to finish it with the white, pull down on my red, and do seven white. That's my seven white. So I'm going to finish that with my red. I'm going to pull down on my white. I'm going to do eight red. That's my eight red. So I'm going to finish that with my white. And I'm going to do my three white. I always struggle with the turning chain. I swear to God, I always have such a problem. Chain one, turn your work. I am slowly running out of red. When I need to add more yarn, I put the two pieces together. This has nothing to do with tapestry crochet. I'm just showing you. I've got to, I've got to bring in some more red. So I make a knot and I tie it super duper tight, but I don't make a second knot with that. I actually make a second knot with these two, just above that knot. And that way it's just not so big of a knot. And when you cut it though, you need to leave some nubbies so it doesn't undo itself. So unfortunately I had to do that just to finish this project. I thought I would have enough, but I guess not. A couple more rows of the red. So I got my dot. I'm reading left to right this time. So that's four white. That's seven red. Seven white. Seven red. Four white.
doing one, doing your work. So last row of using the red, I got to read right to left. So that's five, that's four. This is 11, this is four, and that is five. So that's my five. I gotta switch to my red. Unfortunately, I have a knot right here, which I'm not happy about. Pull down on my white, and I'm gonna do four single crochets. On my fourth stitch, I'm gonna switch to white. I'm going to do 11 white. That's my 11 white. I'm going to switch to my red where I'm going to do four single crochets. I'm going to switch back to my white and I'm going to finish it with five white. Chain one. So, we're all do done using the red, but even though our last two rows are going to be just white, 29 stitches all in white, I'm still going to weave in the next row with the red because I just I want it to be weaved in. Now if you don't, basically we've 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 weaved it in the last 5 stitches. Um it's just something I like to do, but you don't have to. But your next 2 rows are just going to be straight up 29 single crochets in the white. I'm going to weave in the red for this row but not the last row and I'm just going to cut the red off at the end. So I just want to make sure that it's not going to come undone like if I decide I'm going to make this into a pillow or a purse that it's not going to come undone. So at this point you can turn this into anything you want. You can turn it into a great big bear. You just make the second one, make the same thing again, sew it, stuff it, and then, and I mean you can do it flat. There's a bunny actually I did on my, on my page that I did flat. And then I just put a, a head and everything on it for Easter but you can do whatever you want. Now that this is done, you can turn it into a stuffed animal, you can turn it into a pillow, you can turn it into a purse, you can do whatever you want with it. It's such a good size. Or you can just put it in a frame and hang it on your wall if that's what you want to do. So I can cut my red off. And now my last row is just going to be the white. So I've come to the end. I am just going to, there's nowhere to slip stitch. So we're just fastening off. You want enough to weave though. So, I'm 
I know you can see some of this yarn through it. It's probably the yarn I used. I used one that was four weight and one that was worsted. Oh, I didn't thread that very well, did I? And I also wasn't pulling very tight. So you can weave this on any side you want because you can use both sides. I would just be, I wouldn't be rude about how you weaved it though. Be very, very polite, very clean. So it's going to be a little, and it's going to need a little stretching because um, you were pulling tight and stuff like that. And some of these things that are sticking up, you could probably get some of them to drop down a little bit. So it's going to curl. You're going to have to um, block it. So, because you can use both sides of this, you can do just about anything. You can make this into absolutely anything you want because you're able to use both sides. So, uh, me not so much because I got this stupid knot right there, but um, I'm, I'm just going to turn this into a pillow probably or maybe a little purse. Anyway, that is how we read a graph chart to do, they're called graph GANs, is what they're called. So um, this is the one that I did, uh, this is the pillow that I made, that's the heart I did for the uh, pillow I made. I just thought I would print out a fresh heart for, for us to do together so I can show you. So you just got to remember each square is a stitch unless it's comes in a form, Let's see if I can find an example. Here's an example. So here's a snowflake. Each of these, let me turn it around. Each of these squares is five stitches. So some, some of yours are, the squares are very hard to see because these lines are very prevalent. But each square, so you have five in each of these squares. So these ones are actually easier to read because then you can just go five, ten, five, ten in the white, and then one, two in the white, one in, you know, it's just easier to do it that way. So these ones are actually easier to read. Even though it looks more complicated, they're actually easier to read. So that is how you do. So that's the uh, little pony I made. I made a purse for my granddaughter. You can see all my little numbers all over it. That's one purse I did. And this, I did actually put this on a hat, on a winter hat. So this is what I did. And that's just from this. Now I had to figure it out all by myself because you can't really quite follow that because normally you read like left to right, right to left, all the way through the pattern. Well, when you're making a hat, you can't do that. So this one, this one was a little bit different. You can do a lot with these graph GANs is what they're called. So that's why I decided I wanted to show you all. And there's another one I did. So um, I just added extra rows around because I wanted it to be bigger. So I just added extra rows. So that's what all these stupid notes are about. But this was another purse that I did with the word cute on it for Christmas. Of course, I have no pictures of these because I wasn't doing videos. But I just thought I would do videos with you guys so that you could see exactly how to read a graph GAN. So I'll put the link below to a free site where you can print off your own graph GAN so that you can... Um, do some really fancy work.
Thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you like this for Valentine's Day. And I hope you can put it to good use. And I'll see you in the next video.